Hello everyone, welcome, welcome to another edition of the Ohio Guys here. My name is Christian Ocampo and today I'm being joined by Kevin T. Collins. How are you doing, sir? Good, how are you? Very good. Thank you for joining me today. My pleasure. <laughs> so we have a few questions we'd like to ask you. Uh, first of all, what's it like working in the industry today? Um, you know, it's a good time to be working in the industry. There's a, you know, if you're talking about specifically the anime industry, or are you talking about voiceovers? What do you mean? Uh, both. Both. Um, it's a really good time to be working in anime, in animation. Um, it, there's a ton of material coming from all over the place. Um, I, I, I work on shows that originated in France, in Japan, in India. Um, so there's just a ton of work and a ton of great stuff going on in terms of animation. Um, in terms of the other voiceover realms that I work in, like commercials, it's not the greatest time right now, and it's because there's a there's basically this pendulum that happens where for five or ten years, celebrities won't do anything related to commercials, and then... The, the pendulum shifts and all of a sudden they will. I don't know why, it's just at some points they're, they're willing to do that stuff and if they're willing to do it, people like me, we don't get to do it. So a lot of the voiceover work that I was doing maybe five, seven years ago, I'm not doing right now because Morgan Freeman's doing it or you know, Gene Hackman's doing it. So in that sense, that's, you know, but it's, it's a pendulum, like I said, so it's going to switch back and all of a sudden Julia Roberts isn't going to be willing to do those things anymore and um, they'll ask me because uh, I sound so much like Julia Roberts. And uh, so it's a, it's a good time to work. It's, you know, voiceover's been great to me. It's, it's allowed me to support my family and, um, you know, I have kids and a wife, and uh, my wife works sometimes as an actress, but uh, sometimes not. And, you know, it's because of voiceovers, really, that I've been able to do that. So it's a good time. It's good. All right. Uh, next question. Uh, what is your favorite show you have worked on? My favorite show? <laughs> Hard one. Wow. <laughs> um, you know, there's probably two... Um, one that I really like to work on, which is probably a series you may have never have heard of, called Ah My Goddess, and oh. it's because I got to play a character named Senbei, who was a genie. He was this little genie, and he talked like this, and he said, uh, Shakin, and he just was a lot of fun. He did a lot of accents, and he was just great fun to do, but if I had to talk about one series, it would probably be Berserk. I mean, just being able to, to work on Griffith. Um, twice to be able to do the television series first and then to do the trilogy of movies ten years later um, that was you know he's just an amazing character he's just so well written so interesting so dynamic in terms of a cartoon character um, that I just loved working on that um, probably more than anything else all right a lot of show by the way thank you <laughs> yeah it's a great one all right uh, next question. What was it like working on Bakuman? Bakuman was really fun. Um, it was short. I don't know why. I felt like there was actually supposed to be more of Bakuman than actually happened. And I don't know if that's because there was, there was a time when the, the distribution company that was feeding um, material from Japan to uh, NYAV Post, which is where I did a lot of these anime things with Michael Center Nicholas, um, they kind of folded, not NYAV, but uh, this other company kind of started to implode. And I feel like, if I can remember correctly, we were doing Bakuman, and we did you know, a handful of episodes of it, and it was great because not only was I getting to work with Michael Center Nicholas again, um, who had moved, you know, he lives in LA most of the time, so most of the time I don't get to work with him, except maybe over Skype occasionally, um, and we're great friends. So getting to work with him as a director actor is always amazing, but he was also the other lead character. So I got to, you know, actually be in there with him and he's such an amazing voice actor in addition to being a great director. So Bakuman was really fun and I also don't usually play high school kids. Um, I just tend to play older characters or villains or, you know, your occasional kind of 
effeminate gay character I play as well. But usually, you know, they say I sound too old to play 16, 17-year-old guys. But, you know, that, that show was really fun and also really well-written. Just a great show. So I, I liked it a lot. All right. Uh, going back to your, sh your favorite show, what was it like being on Berserk? Ah, Berserk. <laughs> Berserk is a trip because in the circles of anime, I am more well known for doing Berserk than I'm known for doing anything else in my whole career. And I've, you know, I've been on TV and I've done a lot of theater here in New York and I've done a ton, you know, 200 audiobooks, but I'm most well known in that world for being Griffith. And it's one of the two things for which there's an action figure, you know, which I have. I, I should have had it here. I could play with it. <laughs> um, so working on Berserk the first time was a great experience because we had this huge arc uh, to, to act. It was, I think, 25 episodes um, that we did over the course of maybe six months. So it was a pretty rapid process. We were doing five-hour sessions, six-hour sessions at Michael's um, old place which we were in the summer and it had no air conditioning. So there were times when I actually joked about like taking my pants off and doing the thing in my underwear because it was so hot. Um, and I had this wooden sword that I used for, I guess I was kind of method acting, so I had this wooden sword that's around here somewhere. Um, or it might still be at Michael's place. And uh, any time, you know, Griffith would be like, ah, I would have the sword and I would, ah, and it would, you know, it helped. It, it, it shows in the, in the acting, I think. And then, you know, so that was a trip, and just getting to do that huge role with so much, um, so, such a dynamic role, um, getting to do that. And then, something that never happens, 10 years later, getting to do it again. And 10 years later being, you know, ten, ha having studied acting for 10 more years, having voice acted for 10 more years, just the confidence with which I was able to approach that character, al already having known the arc, you know, it, the first time through, you know, I probably had watched a bunch of the episodes, but maybe not. I mean, you know, when you go for an anime session, most of the time you don't know anything. You just know the line. That's it. You're looking at a line, and you have a director who has seen the series, and the director says, okay, well, this is what's going on. Um, so going back the second time, 10 years later, 10 years smarter, 10 years better, and knowing what was going to happen and knowing when you talk about, you know, the dream speech that he does or whatever, Griffith's dream speech where he talks about my dream or, you know, how he respects people who go after their dreams and knowing that that's going to eventually become, you know, spoiler alert, that's going to eventually become like he's a demon and he'll sacrifice everything, everyone he supposedly cared about, you know, the two people that he really cared about, he's going to totally sacrifice Sorry for the spoilers. Um, and um, so getting to go back 10 years later, still with Michael, so same director, uh, same, I don't know if it was the same studio. I think it's the same building, but I think it's a different, we were in a different room. Um, but going back to the same character 10 years later, with that much confidence under your belt of everything that you, you know, I, I'm a working actor, so everything I've done in 10 years, I felt like I could live as Griffith so much more the second time than the first. And there's, you know, there's hard stuff in there. That, that whole third movie when he has his tongue cut out, sorry, spoiler alert, <laughs> and he like can't talk, and it's just moaning. Like the whole, like the whole first half hour that I had in that session was just moaning. I mean, being able to to approach that as an actor, and I still have my wooden sword, and um, so that that was such a gift that Michael Michael Center Nicholas is totally responsible for that. He went after that, and he said, "I want this. I want these movies. I want to use the same cast," um, and he did. You know, almost everybody was the same. Um, and Mark and Carrie getting to work with them again, although, you know, you don't really get to work with them because I'm just working with Michael. But that was, um, 
you know, one of the high points of my career, probably. It's a great show, man. Fellow Berserk fans. <laughs> yeah, it is a good show. And I know our, our viewers are Berserk fans as well, so you're giving them a big treat right now. Yeah, I can't tell you how many times I've been either like teaching a class and I've said, oh yeah, I did some anime and you know, one kid or two kids in the class will be like, oh my God, what did you do? And I'm like, oh, I was, you know, I was in Berserk. And they were like, you were in Berserk. And I was like, yeah, I was Griffith. And they were like, you were Griffith. I mean, and I've been on film sets where like grips or, you know, people who were just working on the film, they'll be into anime and they'll find out. And I was on one set and the guy had just watched it the previous night. He was just like, I just finished watching that last night. It's so good. So it, it was a, it's a real gift. Um, to have been part of such a well-known and loved show. Yeah, it's still going on now. Uh, there's a continuation. Kind of. I know, fingers crossed. Yep, fingers crossed. I don't know. what. I, it's a sequel, right? There's a sequel series. Oh, uh, yeah, it's, they're continuing like past the... Uh, I forgot the, the new arc after the... Spurs, so they're the uh, Eclipse part. So. Yeah. What, what so... Who knows? I mean, maybe it would need a different voice because he's like evil Griffith now or something. I don't know. But could be fun. Yeah. Could be fun. If anyone's watching, I'm in. <laughs> All right. Uh, now it's time for our funny little question. If you can be any character you have played in real life, will you be and you can mix and match? Oh, I'd probably be Senbei, the genie from Oh My Goddess, just because he was so fun and because who wouldn't want to be a genie? You can just, you know, grant everybody's wishes, grant your own wishes. So I probably would be him, even though he's, like, tiny. He's like, sits on her shoulder like this, and that's a little small for me, but that's probably who I'd be. I don't think I'd be Griffith. <laughs> Maybe his powers and sword skills, but... Maybe, maybe. His sword skills, for sure. His, his long, flowing locks, I wouldn't mind, but... Um, no, I think I'd be Senbei. He's okay. too fun. Shaquille! <laughs> I'm going to watch that. Yeah, check it out. It's fun. It's a fun series. Actually, Mark Durazon, I think, who played Guts, mm -hmm. he directed that series, I think. Yeah, yeah, I think I saw his name as the ADO director. Yeah. Definitely going to check it out. It was fun to work work on that. Uh, next question. What was it like working on Magical Clubs, Mas Magical Users Club? Oh, Magic Users Club. That was probably my, I think I did one, no, I did two first, two animes right at the same time. And that was at Michael's old place before 9-11 because he used to have a studio right down by the World Trade Center. And uh, I, I did something called Twin Signal, which was a short little anime where I played the, the villain named Pulse. And I did kind of a like a dirty anime. I forget what they call They call those hentai. Is that what they call them? Yes. Yeah, I did one of those, you know, where, you know, I turn into a tentacled monster that has, you know, things on its tentacles. Mm -hmm. uh, so I did those two at the same time. And this was right after I graduated from college. So I was 22 years old. I just studied musical theater. I got out of college, and this was the first job I had to be this tentacle monster. And I was like, okay, sure, sounds great. And then the second thing I did was, was Magic Users Club, which was fun, and it kind of established me as, as my two like archetypes that I kind of mentioned already, where I played kind of bad guys, like I did in Twin Signal. And then I played like this guy who's like, hello, and he, I, I can't remember the guy's name in Magic Users Club, but he was like, hi, and he was a little effeminate, and he was kind of always flirting with the other male character, and, you know, Michael was like, don't worry, he's not gay, he's just, you know, he's just affectionate. <laughs> and I was like, I don't care if he's gay, it doesn't, it doesn't matter to me, but um, I guess maybe it mattered in Japan, I don't know. But um, it was fun, it was a fun series, it was just fun, after playing like you know, Twin Signal, which was just like, ah, like screaming and battles and and then doing um, the weird ooh, tentacle guy, uh, <laughs> whose name I can't remember. Um, funny side story, when I started doing anime, my parents came to visit me in New York, and one day, I think I was doing a show or something, and I so I was off in the evening doing something or rehearsing or something, and they were like, oh, I want to watch one of Kevin's animes. That'd, that'd be fun. So they popped in one of my animes. And of course, which one did they pick? The dirty one. The tentacle <laughs> one. So my parents are sitting there watching it and like, they're oh my God, this is kind of, oh, oh my. You know. 
So that's a small side story. But Magic Users Club was really fun because it was just pure comedy, fun, you know, magic, all that stuff. It was just a fun, fun show. Yeah, it was another show I got to get around to, man. Sorry about that. That's <laughs> all right. Yeah. No, I will check it out. Yeah, cool. check it out. It's fun. And uh, this now it's time for another little trivial uh, question. So what's like working on audiobooks? Well, audiobooks is obviously it's a totally different world than than anime. You know, in anime, you're going one line at a time. You're doing you know one little thing until you nail it and get it perfectly matching to the flap and everything. And and it's um, but in a, in another sense, it's the same because it's just acting and it's just storytelling. So I did my first audiobook in like 2007, and um, since then I've done over 200 of them. It's it's basically what I make most of my money doing, um, and most of my living. And it's really hard to be honest. It's not easy. Um, you're sitting in this. I have this. This is my booth behind me. I have a booth in my house now where I do a lot of my work, um, and you know you're just in there for hours at a time talking to yourself or maybe you have a director or an engineer but the way things are working now you know I'm in there by myself with a keyboard and a monitor and I'm just recording myself and there's nobody I'm just talking to myself for hours at a time but it's storytelling it's it, you know it's the same thing that I've been fascinated with since I was six years old and I started doing theater it's telling a story and it's at the raw at the most raw basic storytelling because you're literally it's just you and words and that's it and it's up to you to and it's up to the writer of course because the writer creates all the amazing words but it's a duet between the writer and the narrator and their performance and so there's a lot of responsibility in that but it's it's a great challenge almost every time it feels like climbing a mountain or doing something you know really physically difficult because especially when you get a long book that's maybe thirty hours long when it's finished that's I actually did a book about climbing Mount Everest that was thirty hours long so that was like climbing Mount Everest for me I say I've been to the top of Everest <laughs> um, so audiobooks are great they're very challenging you know if if you're good at accents, or if you're re if you can really read, like I, I I happen to be able to read really well without making a lot of mistakes. It's one of the few fields you can work in in any field where if you work faster, you're done quicker. Mm. You know, most people they got to put in their eight hours or they got to do whatever. But and and animation is like that too. If you work faster, you're done quicker. But you know, if I finish my book, and you know, I do, I record like two hours a day, basically, you know, on audiobooks um, almost every day. And uh, if I do my two hours in two hours, I'm done. Some people might take four hours to do two hours. I think the industry standard is three hours to two hours, so it's like one and a half or two to one. But you know, I'm lucky. I don't. I read well. I don't make a lot of mistakes. Um, I prep well, so um, I know the script. And um, so, what's it like working in audiobooks? It's uh, it's been great for me. It really has. I've read some wonderful books by wonderful authors, both famous and people that nobody have heard of yet. Um, and you know, some get made into movies, which is cool, and some should be made into movies and are not. But um, when I become a big deal, then I can make those into movies. I have this whole wealth of books just waiting for me to make them into movies. Because I'm a director as well. That's one of the things that I do um, as well. And, um, so I'm always thinking about stuff like that. But it's, uh, it's great working in audiobooks. It really, it's been a gift to me because ever since I started doing that, I didn't have to wait tables or do anything like really soul-sucking like that, I, I, I get to tell a story. And like I said, ever since I was six years old and I first set foot on a stage, all I wanted to do was tell stories. And I tell stories in anime. I tell stories uh, with audiobooks. I tell stories when I'm in a play. I tell stories when I direct a web series. It's all about telling a story, taking the audience on a journey, and that's what drives me to do pretty much everything that I do. Well said. 
Thank you. I try. I'm telling a story. Yeah, you are. <laughs> I enjoy it. Thank you. All right. So, is there anything else that that's coming out that you can talk about, or anything you just want to plug in at this time? Well, I have a lot of books coming out um, that are great, um, but you can find those uh, if you go to audible.com and just type in Kevin T. Collins. You'll see all my books. Um, but the thing that I that I would love to talk about actually is music, which we haven't talked about at all. But another way that I tell stories is I write music. And if you're a fan of Berserk and you've watched the outtakes, you'll know that I yes. sing. Um, and that was a great, fun thing that Michael and I discovered while we were doing the first Berserk. Um, that people love. I mean, I, I get tweets about it today, you know, and we did that 13 years ago or something, and I still get tweets and emails about it and um, people who just love the singing. <laughs> so I want to plug my album, which came out, I think, I think it's almost two years old now, but it's my second album. I did an album when I was 17, which is not that great, called Crossing to Safety. You can check it out. It's fine. It's up there. It's on iTunes. But the album that I did um, when I was basically when I turned like 34, so it took me 17 years to do each album, um, <laughs> is really great. I'm really proud of it. It's called In Between. It's all original songs. It's basically the story of a relationship uh, between a man and a woman uh, that has its ups and downs. And um, that's why it's called In Between, because I have a lyric that says it's... It's not you or me, but what's in between us, you know, that makes a life. And so that, too, is a story. And each song is a little story. And I'm super proud of it. And I would love for people to go check it out. It's called In Between, Kevin T. Collins In Between. Um, it's got 14 tracks on it. Um, and it's just, it's just fun to listen to. So that's the only thing I would want to plug, I guess. Yeah, I mean, yeah, right here it is. People all uh, check out his music, his album. Check it out. Yeah. Yeah. Hope you like it. Yep. Little plug in for his music. All right. So now comes to our last question, and we ask to all the voice actors any Facebook, Twitter, or any other social media for the fans to contact you? Oh, sure. I'm on all that stuff. So um, I think I'm Kevin T. Collins on pretty much everything. I'm at Kevin T. Collins on Twitter. Um, you can totally follow me. I, I admit I don't tweet that much. Um, so when I do, I try to make it a good one. Mm -hmm. um, I do tweet people back, though. I, I get tweets, again, most of the time I get social media, it's from anime. It's people who really want to reach out. And then most of the time I get, you know, emails, it's usually audiobooks or occasionally anime stuff. But um, I have a website. It's KevinTCollins.com. Uh, on it, you can email me. Um, you can Twitter me at, at KevinTCollins. I'm on Facebook as well. I'm on Instagram, Kevin T. Collins again. So, yeah, I'm, I'm everywhere. <laughs> All right. Well, again, we want to thank you for your time and doing this interview. I know it took a while for us to get it. <laughs> yeah, what did we start this process? What, a year ago or something? Yeah. Yeah, it took a while. It's, it's my bad. I don't get things done very quickly. Nah. Well, again, thank you, anyways. You know, with this hey, it's my part. pleasure. Thank you for your interest. Yeah. Yeah, well, and like. Thank you to the fans. Thank you to the Berserk fans. Hope you guys enjoyed this interview. And there's many more to come. Again, I'm your host, Trishan Campo, And he's Kevin T. Commons. And we hope to see you all again next time. Bye, everyone. <laughs>